Welcome to Researching Statutes Part 2, Finding and Updating Statutes in Print. This is a tutorial by the Jerome Hall Law Library at Indiana University Maurer School of Law. In this tutorial, we'll cover elements that are typically found in statutes that you should look for when you're doing statutory research, how to search for statutes, and finally, how to make sure you have the most up-to-date language of the statute. Most statutes typically have certain features such as statements of purpose, definitions, substantive provisions, enforcement provisions, and other internal elements. This list explains the most frequent of these common elements. Often, these elements are in different sections, both in the Act itself and in the statutory code, in order to create an organizational structure. This means that when you find one section, say the substantive provisions, you need to remember to look for the other sections like definitions, the enforcement provisions, and other elements to get complete information about the law. So I just said that these internal elements are often spread across multiple sections of the code, but like everything in law, there are exceptions. Sometimes everything will be in one section. In the US code and perhaps in some state codes, Statutory elements may even be in the notes to a section rather than in the actual text itself. The URLs in parentheses give examples of all of these. This is just another reminder that when you're doing statutory research, you should read carefully, read further than you think you need to, and reflect on whether there is something missing from what you've found. As mentioned on this slide, you should pay attention to any cross-references and check the table of contents for sections near the one you're using that might be relevant. There are several different ways to locate statutes when you're working in print. Which you use depends in part on what you already know. Indexes are the best way to research statutes in print when you know some of the vocabulary that will be involved, but you don't have a specific citation or a statute name. Indexes provide an alphabetical list of subjects covered by the statutes. A subject entry in the index gives references to all the code sections that address that subject. Indexes include lots of synonyms to help you find the correct entry. Secondary sources, such as legal encyclopedias, treatises, and American law reports, are a good place to start when you know little about an area of law. They provide both explanations of the law and give you background information, plus citations to relevant statutes. These citations make it easy to then find the statutes in the code. Popular name tables are a code feature that are useful when you know the name of a statute, even a colloquial name such as Obamacare or the Patriot Act. When you look up the name, the table shows you where that statute was placed in the statutory code. Full text searching is the most commonly used method when you're using digital legal research databases for statutory research. We're going to cover full text searching in later tutorials. What about the table of contents? With statutes, the table of contents is really just a list of the top level of the subject hierarchy. Even a more expanded list is not all that helpful unless you're already familiar with the code. That said, an expanded table of contents can be very helpful once you've identified a relevant section and you use that table of contents to scan for other nearby sections that you should also read. So where do you find these tools that will help you locate statutes in a statutory code? Indexes and tables are shelved with print codes at the end of the collection of code volumes. Secondary sources are shelved separately because they serve many purposes beyond just statutory research. You should use the library's online catalog to find secondary sources, or if that's overwhelming, ask a research librarian for help. I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of how to find a statutory code section in a print code. And I'm here with the Indiana code to show you this. The first thing you do with a print code is look for the index. And indexes are shelved 
at the end of the code volumes. They're usually the first things after the code volumes on the shelf. Now today I'm interested in mechanics liens, so I want the index volume that covers M, and that's going to be in the F to P volume. So I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to look for M-E-C-H for mechanic. And I'm going by the words at the tops of the pages in the corners. And there we go. The page with mechanics liens on it. It comes between meals and mediation. And here's mechanics liens. And there are lots of entries under mechanics liens. But I can tell that what I need to find is Title 32, Article 28, um, Chapter 3, and so on. They're all going to fall in 32-28-3. So that's helpful. If I want to get more specific in the index, I can, but I don't need to. So now I go back to the volumes on the shelf, and I'm looking for Title 32. And they start with one and go all the way up to 36. 32, um, I find right here, here's title 31, here's title 32. It tells me this on the spine of the volume. It tells me that it's property, which makes sense when we're dealing with mechanics liens. And then below that, it gives me some more information about exactly which articles and chapters and sections are included in this volume of title 32. It's the second volume of Title 32 that is going to cover Article 28. Article 28 is in this one. It says right here, 32-28 to end. So I'm going to pull that volume out. And I'm going to look for 32-28. I actually opened to 32-28-3. Um, but I want to get to the beginning of it. And I reached the beginning of Chapter 3 in Title um, 32, Article 28, and it tells me the various sections that are in this chapter and what each one is. I, today, am most interested in Section 1, um, which is sort of the general introduction to mechanics liens, and then I would move on from there. So that's really all there is to it, finding a statute and a code. It's not always quite that straightforward, but you start with the index and work your way through the index and then find the appropriate volume and the section that you need in that volume. For updating a section, we'll do that in a separate video. One challenge in statutory research is that the language of statutes is always subject to change, but legal publishers have come up with clever ways to notify researchers of changes in language so that you can make sure you're using the current version. Checking for updates is a vital step in statutory research. Why is updating so important? Because the main volume may not have been replaced by a new volume for many years, as shown in this photo here with a volume that is more than 10 years old. You have to use the supplementary tools shown on the next few slides to ensure you're not using outdated language. There are a number of items to look for when you're updating statutes in print. These include pocket parts or supplementary pamphlets, legislative service pamphlets, and annotation service pamphlets. A pocket part is a pamphlet that slides into a pocket built into the back cover of a main volume of the code. The pocket part will have updates to both the statutory text and the editorial annotations, those references to cases and other resources. To do this, Locate the pocket part on the inside back cover of the volume. Check the date on the front page of the pocket part to see how current it is. And then look in the pocket part for the section you're updating. If it's not included in the pocket part, then no updates had been made when the pocket part was published. Here's an example from the pocket part to the Indiana Code. The format of the pocket part mirrors the layout of the main volume. This statute's entry in the pocket part contains only updates to the annotations. The statutory text has not been changed. When a pocket part becomes too large to fit in the back of the volume, it will be printed as a freestanding supplementary pamphlet, which will sit on the shelf next to the main code volume that it's updating. 
So if there's no pocket part, check for a supplementary pamphlet instead. When enough changes have occurred that the supplementary pamphlet is getting unwieldy, the publisher will print a replacement volume. Some volumes are replaced before and more often than other volumes because some areas of law are more active. Libraries should shelve only current volumes in the main collection of statutes. Older replaced volumes will be removed and placed with the superseded codes. So you shouldn't have to worry about whether the volume you're using is a replacement volume or not. After you check the pocket part or supplementary pamphlet, you need to check the code's advanced legislative service pamphlets. They are usually shelved at the very end of the code set. Advanced legislative pamphlets provide the latest laws as they are passed by the legislature, and they include tables that list the code sections that have been affected by these new laws. Use the table of contents in the advanced legislative service pamphlets to identify and locate the tables, the text of the acts, and the subject index if there is one. Here's an example of the table that shows which sections of the code have been affected by new laws. It's organized by section number. In this picture, you can see that Indiana Code section 32-31-3-12 is not listed which means that it has not been affected by any 2020 legislation. But section 32-34-1-1 was amended by section 22 of public law number 81-2020. How do you find out more about this public law? Once you've located the public law number that affects your statute, you look at the front covers of the Indiana Legislative Service booklets to find the correct booklet that will have that public law number and locate the text of the amending language. In this case, we find the amended statutory language in issue number one. New language has no special formatting. Additions are indicated by bold and deletions are indicated by a strikeout. The last print updating step is to check an annotation service. This service updates a code's annotations by providing references to new cases and other materials. Always check the dates printed on the updating materials to make sure you're using the most current pamphlets. Pictured here is the page from West's Interim Update Service where section 32-34-1-1 would appear we can see that there are no new annotations for this code section. But you can see what these annotations would look like from the other code sections on this page. Finally, you should always use a citator to update your statutory research. A citator will tell you if there's any pending legislation which might affect your statute. You can also use a citator to find additional research references, such as cases and law review articles that cite your code section but aren't included in the editorial annotations. Print citators are a thing of the past, so you have to use one of the major legal research databases in order to use a citator. We will talk about citators in parts three and four of this tutorial series when we cover statutory research in Lexis and Westlaw. So to update a statute, we were here at Title 32, Article 28, Chapter 3, Section 1 on Mechanics Liens, and we want to know if this has been updated since this volume was printed. In fact, to find out when this volume was printed, we can turn to the front and look at the copyright date. 2013, this volume was printed. That's not as old as some that I've seen, um, but still, that's, you know, seven years, eight years, so we want to update this. What we do is turn to the back of the volume and look for a pocket part. It's called a pocket part because it fits into a pocket in the back of the volume. In the pocket part, I follow um, the numbered citations just like you do in the main volume. So I want 3228, and so I'm looking up in the corners to find 3228.
And I found 32, 28, 3. I want to get to the beginning of that and look at 3, 1. And the print is small here. And I found 32, 28, 3, 1. There have been no changes to the text, but there are lots of new um, annotations, law reviews, ALRs, encyclopedia entries, and lots of notes of decisions that talk about this particular section. But no textual changes are noted here. However, this pocket part, when I look at the front, is the 2019 pocket part. And it's currently October of 2020, so I need to know what has happened since this pocket part was published. To do that, I look for the legislative services pamphlets. They are on the shelf. They come after the volumes, after the indexes. They're right down here. So I'm going to pull them out and I'm going to bring the annotations service pamphlet with me. So the first step in updating after the pocket part is to find the table that tells us which code sections have been affected by 2020 laws. That table, when West does these pamphlets, they put it at the back of the final volume of their pamphlets. So I have the last volume here and I'm gonna to turn to the back of it and find the table. So I look at the table and I wanna find the Indiana code section to find out whether it's been affected. I know I'm in the right table because it says sections affected. And I need to go to title 32. Title 32, article 28, chapter three, section one. And it has been amended. It was amended by public law 81 of 2020, section, where'd it go, 18. So in order to find those changes, I need to then find this law, and those laws are published in these pamphlets. So now I need to find public law 81 and look at section 18 of it. To find public law 81, I look at the ranges on the front of the pamphlets. This one goes from 148 to 167. 81 does not fall in there but 81 does fall between one and 106. So this is the pamphlet I want. I open this up and flip through until I find public law 81. Here's the beginning of public law 81 and I wanted section 18. Again, in the corners of the pages, it's gonna tell me what section is covered on this page so I can find section 18 pretty easily. Here it is on the page. Now I can read section 18 and find out how it changed the code section I'm interested in. So I can read that. That's the actual text of the law. What about annotations? Are there any new annotations? For that, I need the one last pamphlet that we have. The Annotated Indiana Code Interim Update Service. And again, I look for my statutory section which was 32, 28. Here we go from 32, Title 32, Article 24. There's another one, Article 24, and then it skips from down to Title 32, Article 29. So Article 28 is not covered in here. That means there are no new annotations for Article 28 for any of the chapters in that article. And that's the last step in our updating. We can be confident of that last step. This is the 2020 Interim Update Service, and we know that the Indiana General Assembly does not pass new laws after it ends its session in the spring. And as I said, it's now October, so we know we're good until the General Assembly sits again at the beginning of 2021. You should now have a basic understanding of the typical internal elements of a statute that you will want to look for when you're doing statutory research, methods of searching for relevant statutes in print, and how to update statutes in print. This concludes Researching Statutes Part 2. Please go on to the next tutorial, Researching Statutes Part 3, Statutes in Westlaw. If you have any questions, the research librarians at the Jerome Hall Law Library are happy to help.